All right, so you've been, you've been you've been in a place where you thought like, hey, well, you know, maybe my price is too high. Who's gonna pay that price for this? You know, like who who is actually gonna like? Buy? Oh no, lost an iPad. Lost an iPad. I think we lost one. Are we good? Nope, I lost an iPad. All right, we're back. We're back with that iPad. Sorry about that other iPad. All right, so um, you guys are still good. Put it away. Put it away. All right, so let me tell you something, guys. Price is not the buyer's biggest concern and is actually on the bottom of someone's list. Okay? I mean, true buyers. Okay? This is no, this is true buyers. Price is not the biggest concern and is actually at the bottom of the list of true reasons people don't buy. Okay? I'm just I'm just let I mean, I have studied this. I have been in it. I'm telling you guys, price is the last thing. Now, price is the easiest thing. For someone to say, hey, I, you know, I, I don't want this or, you know, eh, right? Price is the easiest thing for your prospects, for potential customers or whoever you're talking to. It's easier for them to say, hey, uh, I don't have the money or that's just too expensive. Miranda says take the headphones off. Is that not better? You guys can't hear me better with the headphones? I don't mean, hey, it's whatever. I just, I'm, it's, all, it's all for you, right? So if the headphones doesn't work, uh, you know, because I got three things going on here. So I want to make sure that at least... One of them gets good sound. So if the headphones are off, the headphones are off. Not a problem for me. Throw the headphones on the floor. Throw it on the floor. Throw it on the ground. All right, so let me, let me tell you this. I wrote this one down. Getting the sale isn't about money. It's ultimately about the buyer having confidence that the product is the right one for them. Okay? I want, you, I want you guys to, uh, to understand that it's not really about money. It's about understanding that the, this product is right for them. Most of the time, people don't make sales because they haven't really distinguished whether or not the product is right for that person. They, they haven't uh, discovered the, the problem or the real concerns that most people have. Now, I'm going to be breaking down like the psychological concerns that people have when it comes to making a purchase. Okay? Uh, let's see. Angela says... I've had people without knowing a name, not knowing me, just knowing the benefits and how to use it, uh, throw out 400, never matter. Okay, cool, yeah. People, I mean, people will throw out, you know, uh, all kinds of money. Now, understand that people, you know, $400 to one person may seem like $40 to them. You know, uh, $40 may seem like 400 to the next. So we have to, we have to understand that, you know, money, that money is different to different people, okay? People value different things, right? I mean, uh, you know, some we'll, we'll, we'll easily pay three hundred dollars or a thousand dollars on Christmas presents, but we'll 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 uh, when it comes to our education, sometimes we'll 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 hesitate on buying that thousand dollar course or going to that event that may cost a thousand dollars. But you look back over Christmas and you know you spend a thousand dollars on stuff that you won't even remember that you bought last year, right? So. You know, if there's a price difference, the customer wants assurance that your product has advantages in excess of the cost difference, all right? So what that means is they want to know that they're getting away with something, really. Really, They want to know that, hey, if I paid 300 then the differences between this product, would I would have really paid 600 for this product, okay, or this service, or whatever it is, okay? So you've got to be able to paint that picture for someone. It's not always about price. Okay, um, you know, I read something yesterday. It was, it was in this book. And it was about graduate students, and they'd always kind of bark about price when it, it was marketing graduate students. And they used to always tell them, never get in a price war with someone with an inferior product. Okay, I want you guys to remember that. Never get in a price war with somebody that has an that has an inferior product or service to yours. Okay, because you'll always lose. You'll always lose a price war to an inferior product. Okay, and what you're doing is you're actually you're actually deterring away the 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 person that you actually want to work with. When they see that price, they're saying, "Ah, no, no, I don't, I don't really. Um, that's not for me, right?" You know, if I see a car, you know, uh, someone that likes a car, I like cars, right? I like cars. Um, you know, if you don't like cars, it's okay. But if a Lamborghini costs twenty thousand dollars and look the same, smell the same, you know. Most people probably wouldn't even be like, nah, that can't be real. I'm not going to pay 20 stacks for a Lamborghini. 
However, when you throw that $200,000 price tag on a Lamborghini, it starts to attract a particular person, and it's actually going to, uh, I guess, you know, shy away or, or push away the person that they don't want. Okay, um, you're advertising the inferior product. Don't do it. Yeah, you're you're literally just you're putting out that hey, this this product is uh, is inferior, and I'm willing to lower my price for it. And that's what I don't want you guys to do. All right, so I uh, said so, you know most people believe that if the price was lower, they could sell more. All right, have you ever thought about that? Let me raise your hand if you thought about that. If you said hey, if the price was lower, I'd sell more. Okay, I've done that before. I, I thought, hey, I'll lower this price and I'll sell more. Okay, let me tell you what I did once. I I, I came out with this course once, and um, you know, I came out with a really good price. I it came out at a thousand bucks, and I truly believe that that course was worth a thousand dollars. And you know, I sold a few of them, and but it wasn't really like you know the the fifty that I wanted to sell in the launch. So, what I did was I lowered the price. Okay, not knowing how how damaging lowering lowering the price was. All right, so I lowered the price. I sold more of the product, and literally, like barely anybody went through it. Okay, so I lowered the price, and then once I was going back through it and and reaching out to customers and seeing how they liked it, they were really saying, "Hey, I didn't even really go through it. I bought it, saw the value in it, but I never go, I never went through it." Now. If each of those customers would have spent a thousand dollars on that product, chances are they would have gone through it maybe even twice. They would have really spent a lot of time with it. So think about think about that. Think about who you want to attract when you're thinking about price. All right. So again, uh, the truth is, uh, you know, you're not going to sell more just because you lower your price. Okay. So I mean, you have to offer the correct solution. So your main goal should be to find the correct solution. For your for your customer, your prospects. Okay, yeah, I've def I thought it too. I thought too. Right there with you. All right. So understand this: if price gets too cheap, people won't see any value in the product. Additionally, if the price alone, all right, were the reason people buy, then the company wouldn't really need salespeople. All right, and uh, and that's really just a problem for about twenty five percent. So I, you know, I put this down there that. You know, we really wouldn't need salespeople if if it was just price alone, right? The companies that you that you rep for really wouldn't need you out there if it was just, hey, look, you know, price alone. We don't need you, right? So, um, you know, I heard a story once about a guy selling a car, and you know, he was like, man, I could go buy that car uh, for you know five thousand, ten thousand dollars less across the street. And the sales guy said, um, you could, but you won't get me down the street. And he said, immediately the guy just pulled out his pen, signed the papers, and he had his new truck. So remember, you're selling yourself. Put value on yourself and, and put value on what you believe you're worth. Right? A lot of us, we end up in this place where we really don't believe in our self-worth. We don't believe you know, that, um, you know, that, that what we're offering is, is worth what we really want to charge for it. And you know, one of my mentors, he's got a, um, he's got a YouTube course, sells it for $5,000. We were on the phone the other day. He was like, "Man, if I could, I could probably someone could go buy that course or get that information. Uh, you know, probably similar, close information for a lot less than five thousand dollars. But I believe it's worth that. And they don't get me. And I believe that this course that I'm offering is worth five thousand dollars. And people pay it over and over and over again. And then the guy's making like fifty thousand dollars in a week or something like that. Like awesome stuff, right? That's awesome stuff. So." Remember this, okay? Price is not the buyer is not the biggest concern for any buyers. It's actually at the bottom of the list. It it will always take a professional that takes time to sell features and benefits, all right, to handle the price objection. All right? You've got to look. I mean, I was reading something just uh, just a few minutes ago. You've got to look and sell the benefits. Look at what your prospects and customers want. What do they want? Okay, there's a difference between features and benefits. All right, features are you know let's just say you have a health and wellness product. All right, features are hey this product has uh, you know 14,000 glucosamine chondroitins inside that uh, you know mix with the uh, amoxicillin chondroitin moxer, right? And it's got 18 shots of B12 in it. Whatever, right? 
most people that's going right over their head. They're just like, what? I don't really care. Is it going to work? Is it going to fix my foot? Right? What's this product going to do for me? Is it going to save me money? Is it going to fix my foot? Is it going to get my kids to shut up? Is it going to make my fat go away? That's pretty much what people want to know. Like, is it going to fix my shit? Is what they want to know. Right? It's like, I don't really care that, you know, it's got 14, you know, uh, squirrel fibers in it. Right? No. No. You know, you're sitting here learning all these things about your product and your service, and people really don't give a crap. Right? So... Remember, remember this. This is where you get people. This is where you can move people to like love you. Okay, let me read this one because I, I remember I took I took some I took some good notes for you guys. I like really wrote this stuff down so I can stay on track and give you guys the best best of the best. All right, if a buyer is head over heels in love with you and your product and can't live without it, he'll buy it regardless of price. All right assuming they can find the money to pay for it. Most people will find the money to pay for it, all right? If the buyer has full confidence that the product will solve the problems and get them a real solution, they'll buy anything at almost any price. So what do you think your answer is when you get the price objection? You've got to start looking for what are they confident in? Are they confident that that product will help them? All right, and I'm going to share with you a, a, a trick or a technique that I've used. So make sure you stay on to the end because I'm going to, I'm going to share with you a technique that I use and will literally just double your sales. It will, it will attract you the right customers and you'll never, and you'll, you'll learn how to get over the price objection the right way. Okay. Cause there's really, this is, it's no script in order to get over the price objection. All right. It's a, it's a, it's a strategy. It's a technique. Okay. It's energy. All right. Um, Cool, all right, so we're going to rock into it. We're going to keep going, all right? So, people will give their right arm for something that they love, all right? And they'll give their last dollar for a real solution. Remember that. People will give their right arm for something that they love, for somebody that they love, and they'll literally give their last dollar for a solution. People want solutions. You've got to find out what their problem is and what the solution is, and they will gladly trade the money that's in their account for that solution because they'd rather have the solution than the money in their account. Trust me, people would rather have a solution in their life than the money in their account because their subconscious mind, their heart knows that they've been without money before and chances are they can get it back, but they never had that solution. They've never had that solution. So they know that chances are if they lose the money, they could get the money back. But they really want the solution. All right? They want that solution. You have to get your buyer to want your product more than they want their money. <laughs> like, well, as soon as they want what you have more than they want their money, they become disattached to that and they, and they become attached to the solution. All right? So... If the prospect really loves it and it solves their problem, they'll figure out a way to come up with the money if they absolutely love the product and are confident that it will solve their problem, right? So I'm going to I'm gonna you know answer some questions about the money objection. So get your questions ready. If you have questions about the money objection, you know, if you're getting the money objection, I'm going to share with you how to do it, all right? Because I'm going to go over some ways. I'm going to actually go deep, all right? So I'm going to go deep, so share this out real quick. If you've gotten some value from this so far, make sure you press the share button. But I'm going to share with some things. I wrote some things down. This is the stuff that I study, all right? This is the stuff that when I'm when I'm getting ready for the day or I'm getting better or I'm training, this is the kind of stuff that you need to be looking for. So I want you to write this stuff down or come back and watch the recording at about, we're at, we're at like minute 17 and I just turned the camera around. All right, I'm back. All right, cool. So you guys saw my rookie jersey. Awesome. All right. So um, here's what your prospects are thinking. Okay. Here's what they're thinking. So you've got to get in their minds. All right. This is how you get in someone's mind. So you understand what they're thinking. Get out of your own head and get into your prospect's head. Because your head is thinking money, 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 money. Right? Sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. Just sign up. That's what you're thinking. This is what your prospects are thinking. Is this really the right product for me? Okay. Is there a better product than this? Is this the right proposal? 
Will this really solve my problems? Will I actually use this? What will others think of me when I buy this? This is a big one. This is huge. I mean, that Donald Trump, right? It's huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be really huge. All right? When you think when you're talking to your prospects, they're thinking this and they're thinking that this problem is huge, right? You've got to understand that when they're going when they're when they're seeing your presentation, they're thinking this. Am I going to use this huge product? Right? Look, will I actually use this? What will others think about me? Man, I in that build a badass brand course, y'all, man, we went over this like heavy because people with social proof is huge. How people look after they've gone through a product, after they bought some clothes, like clothes are huge. Clothes are huge, right? So how are they gonna feel when they buy Jordan ass jeans? They're not gonna I mean probably most likely people are gonna feel like eh, you know, like, you know, they're Jordache jeans, right? But when you've got those true religion jeans on, right? It's about how it makes you feel, right? How is it going to make you feel when someone takes your product and loses 20 pounds, right? What are, what are they going to think others are going to think about them? That's the thing. I mean, you can plant that seed in someone's head, you win. If you can plant that seed. So it's not all about, the, hey, let me answer these questions for you. It's about when I ask you, um, what will others think about this pro about what, what will others think about me when I buy this now it's you're 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 putting that place like man imagine how people are gonna see you when you're 20 pounds lighter imagine how people are gonna see you when um, you know when you're driving that car imagine what people are gonna think about you when um, when you show up and you know you're able to donate fifty thousand dollars to charity imagine what people are gonna think about you when you show up on stage at the company event and you know people are just cheering your name because they heard your story and now you're just up there you're talking about helping people I mean imagine what people are gonna think about you right that's huge social proof and 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 and, and just being able to to uh, to encounter those feelings is just it's huge so that's a big one. I, I reason why I spent a little more time on that one. Heavy, heavy stuff. All right. Uh, what's another one? Will this person or company take care of me? Will I get the support that I need? You've got to ensure through the prospecting process or whatever process you go through that that person will have the support that they need. All right. Do I know enough about this product to make a decision? Sometimes you just flat out got to ask that. Hey, have you seen enough information in order to make a solid decision? Yes is a good decision. No is a good decision. I just want to know whether you've seen enough information in order to make a solid decision. Ask that question. Don't be afraid to ask that question. You've got to be huge. Right? This is the Donald Trump version. Right? This is why he's probably president because he made a lot of sales. All right. So uh, next one. Um, and I. Oh, this is big. This is big. This one's even huger, even more huge, all right? Am I better off with my money in my bank rather than investing it? Tell me, tell me something, guy. I mean, can I get some thumbs up on that one? I'm, am I bet? I mean, they're, they're truly thinking this. Am I better off keeping my money in the bank or investing it? That's where people are, all right? Uh, what's the last one I put on here? Oh man, this is a big one. This is a big one. This is a really this is a big one. Is this going to be a mistake like the last time? <sighs> man, that one that one's like that. There's a reason why I put that one on there last. Is this one going to be a mistake just like the last time? All of us have made mistakes. We've made buying mistakes and it and it hurts. And people want to know that it's not going to be a mistake this time. So you've got to give them that comfort. You've got to give them that 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 uh, that feeling of of uh, man, what is it? Somebody help me out with this one. Um, not comfort, security. They want that security that this one's not going to be a mistake. All right, this one's not going to be a mistake. When you move a customer down in price, all right, this is it for for everybody that stayed to the end. This is where it is. This is where we hit home. Okay, this is where it is. When you move a customer down in price or offer him something cheaper, they are less likely to want the next product if he didn't want the first one. Okay, 
This will then cause the buyer to think you have no solution at all and that he's just wasting his time with you. By moving up rather than down in your inventory, you'll get him thinking in terms of value. Okay, and find out whether the objection is truly real. So I'm gonna take you through a quick little story, something that just happened uh, a couple days ago, all right? So typically before, all right, before the old me, if I got the price objection, I would tend to go th through the inventory, right? But the first me, the first me would, if I get the price objection, you just start going down on price, okay? You start going down. All right, and this is for those that if you have your own products. But I know there's a lot of network markers on here, so I'm going to share some cool things there. All right, but going down on price will actually lead to less sales for you. It'll lead to less enrollments, whatever you want, less partnerships. Going up on price will at least tell you whether or not the price objection is real or it will create more value for you. All right, this is huge. Stop going down in price and exhaust your inventory. So just yesterday, uh, you know, I got on the phone. Uh, it should have been about, you're know, looking for about a $300 sale with that phone call. And, you know, she's like, hey, you know, um, I don't have the money. It's cool. Go up, go up, go up, go up. No, I really don't have the money. Like when you go up, you find out whether or not the price objection is real. Okay. And then you can always exhaust your inventory. Okay. And at the end of the day, you can always get back to what originally got you on the phone. So um, what originally got us on the phone uh, was a entry-level product. It was an entry-level product that got us on the phone. Uh, you get the price objection, you move up, got another price objection, move up again, and then at the end of the call, we come back to the original, we make a sale, and we go our separate ways, all right? So always go up, go up in price, all right? Exhaust your inventory, not the price. You want to get someone shopping with you, not negotiating with you, all right? That's huge. You want to get somebody shopping with you, not negotiating with you. Once you can get somebody shopping with you, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, people. I'm telling you, it's, it's art. Once you can get someone shopping with you, stop going for price and start exhausting your inventory. A lot of you guys are in companies and you have all sorts of products. You have different plans to come in at. You have all this stuff. Exhaust your inventory. Stop exhausting price and stop going cheap. All right, stop going cheap. All right, every customer has made a mistake before. Remember this. All right, it's the number one reason why they hesitate on making decisions is because they've made mistakes before. Get to the place where they know that this is not a mistake. You've got, they've got your support, and you can answer some of the questions that we did earlier. Boom. All right, I'm telling you guys, when I can't close a sale, all right, always move up, always move the buyer up, okay, to something bigger, more expensive um, than the first solution. All right. Although this may not make sense to you right now, but I'm telling you, it freaking works, okay? It will prove successful if you try it. For those of you that have the, the, the cojones, right? You've got the gut. You've got the, the strength to try this. It will absolutely work for you. I'd love to hear from you, all right? Um, you know, most people that are saying that it's too much money, they're saying that it's too much money for this product or this service. And if you move them up, They'll see the value in it because most people would rather spend more money and make the right decision. Okay, uh, just for instance, we—I mean, I love the psychology of this. Uh, Wes and I were out to eat one night, and we're at this barbecue place, and it's kind of like a higher-end, like upscale barbecue place. I don't know if that even exists, but apparently they do. And um, you know, the funny part is, while we were sitting there, uh, our friend across the table says. There's, there's like this like uh, this plate, right? You can order this plate, and you get like three meats for seventeen dollars. You get or you get two meats for seventeen. You get three for twenty, and then you get four for twenty-five. And immediately, he was like, "I might as well get four for twenty-five, right? I might as well get four for twenty-five. Why? Because it works in all niches and all industries. You'd rather get more, okay? You'd rather you'd rather pay more to get more." When everybody would, it, when it comes down to food, whether or not you're joining a business, whether or not you're going to sell a product, it doesn't matter. People would rather spend more money, get more out of it, and understand that they're not making a mistake. That's what people want. That's what people want. 
So, yo, I hope you guys got value from it. I went in on this one. Hope you guys got a ton of value. If you did, um, press the share button if you did get value from it. Um, always, always, this will be on my website uh, in the next couple of days. You can always check it out. Just hop over to, uh, to ryanmcmorris.com, all right? And um, you can always get that. Guys, if you have not gone through the top online boot camp, the authority boot camp, um, guys, this is the kind of stuff that's in there. All right, if you wanna if you wanna understand the closing questions that I use, the the, the techniques that I use, if you wanna understand the strategies that I use every day, and if you wanna if you want to learn how to get two to five sales every single day in your business, guys, I'm telling you this formula works. And if you want to take those two to five sales and um, and get them to where they're bigger and bigger and bigger sales, she said I'm cute. She think I'm cute, you know. I think you're cute too. But if you want to take those two to five sales and double, triple what the what they're actually doing, I'm telling you guys, it freaking works. Okay, it freaking works. So, did you guys get value? Did anybody have any questions for me? Anybody have any questions for me? Make sure to uh, comment below your questions. I'll answer any of your questions you have. Um, make sure you uh, share this out if you got some value from it. Make sure you press the share button on Facebook. Tag your friends. Tag your teammates. If you're not following me yet. Uh, make sure you press the uh, the turn on button and the notifications here, or just hop over to my fan page or this page. Click uh, click follow and see first. All right. Yeah, Angela said that that mini course was off the charts, guys. Um, I'm adding so much to uh, to the 90 day master right now. I'm telling you guys, this is like um, just bread and butter stuff. I mean, this is stuff you want to keep coming back to over and over, so you master it. You master it. And you literally become lethal inside of your business, and um, and your people see that. You know, if you're in network marketing, your people see that, and they see that. Yo, I need to step my game up. All of a sudden, their sales start to increase, and you know, you're making a lot of passive money. So, hope you guys got some value from it. If you did, make sure to share it. Uh, if you have any questions for me or any questions that you want me to answer on Lunch Money Live, all you gotta do is shoot me an inbox message or shoot me uh, something, and we'll um, an email, and I'll get it to you. All right, guys. So. Hope you got some value from it. All right. I'll see you guys later. And, uh, yo, this is Lunch Money. See ya.